Hey guys, if you're a web developer or looking for a new vector database offering, I would highly recommend MongoDB's vector database. And the reason is it's super simple to set up. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the background of vector databases. I'm gonna talk about how to set up MongoDB since there's not a lot of tutorials online. And we're also gonna go into the pricing as well because I know people who are sensitive about that. So let me share my screen. So what exactly is a vector embedding? A vector embedding is basically just a mathematical representation of a piece of data. And so on OpenAI's website, we're gonna look at this example in which a piece of text can be run through their embedding model and be turned into a series of floating point numbers. And to be exact, the model we're going to use turns it into a series of 1,536 different floating point numbers. And we can think of these floating point numbers as a representation of these words. And by the way, it doesn't have to be just words. This can also apply to images and audio. But for what we're doing, we're just going to stick with text. And so let me show you the intuition behind how this works. So let's go to these slides here. Apologies for the quality, it's from a Chinese research paper from the 1990s. So in this image, we have an X coordinate, we have a Y coordinate, and a Z coordinate, right? So we're in three dimensional space. For a vector embedding using OpenAI's encoder, it would be like this, except instead of three dimensions, it would be 1536 different dimensions. So it would be multi dimensional space. And to measure the similarity between vectors, we have this vector here, vector 0 and vector 1. And we can measure their similarity by three different ways. Technically more, but we're going to stick with the most common three. You can either use Euclidean distance, which is the distance between the ends. You can either use cosine, which is the angle between the vectors, or you can use the dot product of the vectors. And so this applies not just to three-dimensional space, but to multi-dimensional space as well. And so in multi-dimensional space, we're gonna be using the cosine, which is the angle between the vectors. So let's go into the code and show you how we actually set things up in MongoDB. Okay, so let's now go over the code. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is to find your schema. And here I have a document upload schema. And in the schema, I have a title, description, field name, upload date, and the important part, embedding as an array of numbers. So basically, is an array of floating point numbers. And you can actually call this whatever you want. I've called it embedding just to make it clear in this case. And just create your schema like this. Like, this is the important part. And then I'm going to show you how to create the index for the embedding in MongoDB. So what you're going to want to do is already have a MongoDB Atlas account. And I'm not going to go over how to set that up, but it's, there's plenty of tutorials online. But once you have your MongoDB Atlas account, you're going to want to go to search. And then, let's see, go to Atlas search. And I already have the index created here for the embeddings. But what you're, want, what you're going to want to do is create index, go to JSON editor, click next, and then go to where your collection is in this case it's ai automation uploaded documents for me it's going to be whatever you whatever your schema is that you've created for your for your collection and i already have it listed as default you're going to want to do the same it says duplicate index name because i already have one but we're going to need to copy the json from the mongodb tutorial here that they have and I'll put this link in the chat for you but it's also available on their website and basically all this is doing is it's creating an index on the field and we need to change this to embedding by the way because this needs to match what we have in our schema but those two things need to match and so we're basically creating that index on embedding dimensions 1536, which is the number of dimensions that the OpenAI embedding creates, similarity cosine, and if you hover over it, it'll tell you the three different options that you can use. Again, Euclidean, cosine, and dot product. And 
k k nearest neighbor vector as the type and after you have that set up and again i'll post the link to this in the chat in the description you're going to want to click next and yeah and once you've clicked next it'll take a couple of minutes to for the index to be created but it should be good from there i'm not going to create this because i already have one set up like that okay so so once you've created the index you're ready you're pretty much ready and i'm going to walk you through the code how to create the embedding and then retrieve it so let's go to embedding here and so I've set up an endpoint already. And I'm going to walk you through the code of how this works and how you would do this in, in your code base. But basically, we're going to need to we're going to need to give some text to create an embedding on. And in this case, what I'm doing is I want to give my AI knowledge on current events, specifically what's happening with Twitter. So. ChatGPT's cutoff date is 2021, so we want to give it current information. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it information about Elon Musk changing the name to Twitter to X, which happened very recently, actually last month from this recording. So what I'm doing here is I'm scraping this website and getting all the text from it. And the scraper is located here. It's just a regular puppeteer scraper. You can get this code from ChatGPT. All this does is it scrapes a web page and gets the text and returns it. And then with the return text, I'm calling OpenAI to create an embedding based on the text. And that create embedding function is here. I'm just using OpenAI's Node.js wrapper and creating the embedding here. OpenAI create embedding. I'm using the Ada model, which you should too. It's their best performing one at the moment. And then I'm just passing in the text from the web page as the input. And here I'm getting the embedding from the response and I'm just returning it. So that's all that is here. It's just calling OpenAI to create an embedding with the Ada model based on the scraped text. And so once we get the embedding, what we're going to want to do is upload it to MongoDB. We're going to upload the raw text as well as the embedding and we're going to save it. And once we've saved it, we should get a response that everything's been, the document's been uploaded successfully. So let's run this function and see what happens. So let's just first grab this URL. In Postman, I already have this route set up, API embedding document. And I'll put this here and let's click send. And so it's gonna open up the web browser it's going to scrape the Hollywood Reporter. It's going to take the text, create an embedding with the text, and then put it in MongoDB. Okay, document uploaded successfully. You can see that this is all the text in the description that it's scraped. And we can scroll down, and this is the embedding that was created from the text. And we can see that this was successful by going to MongoDB and going to Collections for me, and then going to Upload a Documents. And then it will be here, I believe. Yep, Elon Musk says Twitter. And here we have the embedding, which is an array of floating point numbers of length 1536. Okay, that's, that's awesome. So that was creating the embedding and then uploading it. Now what we want to do is we want to ask a question for it to retrieve the closest embedding based on the cosine and then use that to give us a response. So let me walk you through that here. This is the query embedding route that I've set up. What It takes in a question you can ask, and then based on the question, it turns that question, which is text, into an embedding using OpenAI. It's the same create embedding function that we looked at earlier. It just turns my question that's a text and turns it into embedding. And here is sort of the difficult part, or not the difficult part, but I'll post this as well so you can copy and paste it. But what this is doing is it is taking our embedding that we just created and looking in the database for other embeddings that we have and comparing them and returning the closest ones. So first, it's going through MongoDB, we have this pipeline and it's searching for the nearest neighbors 
and it's going to return the five closest ones in the path embedding and this is going to need to be changed to what you have as your path like if this was embedding two you need to change it to embedding two or whatever so let me just go back and then we're going to return the description and the score the score is a measure of how closely related the embeddings are the higher the better if it's like point if it's like above point 0.9 that's that's really good that's a good match like the highest you can get is one that means like the perfect exact match and we're returning these documents here these are the five similar documents we're going to console log it and here i want to get the closest document possible the one with the highest score so that's what i'm doing here console logging it and then here i'm turning this into a prompt to pass into openai so i'm saying based on this context and the text from the embedding with the highest score answer my question so i'm going to run this and it should make a little bit more sense to you and this is just calling openai with the prompt here so let me run this. Let's go to console.log some things and we'll walk through the console.logs to make it clear. So we have this set up here and the query we're asking is what did Elon Musk change the name of Twitter to? Again, ChatGPT is not gonna have the answer to this because it's cutoff date is 2021. So let's click send. Actually, let's make sure that the server is running, which it should be, of course, yeah. Okay, so let's look sent. Okay, Elon Musk changed the name of Twitter to X. That's perfect. So let's see how it got that. So first, similar documents. It's going through MongoDB. It's comparing the vector embeddings, and it's returning the five closest ones. And we can see this is the first result that was returned, and it's a lot of text. It's going to have the highest score, 0.92. Now the rest of them though are unrelated. It's still gonna return the five closest ones. So there's four underneath it that are unrelated, it's still gonna return those two. So we don't really want those. And you can tell the scores are lower for these, 0 0.86, 0 0.862. So that's all stuff that we don't need, right? But then here, highest score doc, which is basically the one with the highest score, this is what we want, right? And so all of this text here, we're passing in as context here. So it's like based on this context, all the information scraped. And then what did Elon change the, what did Elon Musk change the name of Twitter to? And then the answer. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. It's a little bit complicated, I know, but let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, I'm happy to answer them. And in terms of pricing, we should talk about that too. MongoDB has a free tier with the Atlas, so it's good to just get up and running. Let me see if I have the pricing page pulled up. Yeah, as a free tier. I mean, I think this will get you pretty far to see if you know anybody wants to buy your product. To scale though, MongoDB is like a bit expensive. Like the cheapest dedicated instance I have is $57 per month. And then you have a serverless option, but you know, it's got a bunch of it's got a bunch of hidden pricing kind of, so you're gonna to wanna to look at that. So basically in conclusion, if you wanna just set up one database that also has your vector embeddings, it's like super simple to set up and you can get started for free. I would recommend this. I think it's very, very convenient. The other option is PG vector with Postgres. That's also pretty convenient. But if you have a NoSQL database, you wanna stick with NoSQL, I think this is the way to go, unless if you're scaling, then you might want to look at probably dedicated databases. Again, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know in the comments what you think. And yeah, happy to, happy to help. Thanks. Bye.